Today's teenagers are looking for hope. Suicide has become one of the leading causes of death among teens worldwide. We are called by God to eradicate hopelessness, and since January of 1993, we have been on the road ministering words of hope to teenagers in high schools across America and in nations around the world. Our message is simple. God loves you, He's got a plan for your life, and in Him, you matter. Hi everyone, I'm Dean Sykes and welcome to our You Matter television broadcast. Thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to join us today. Uh, today we've got a real specific subject matter that the Lord uh, instructed me to, to talk with you about. But before we get into that, let's just pray. Father, I thank you for the word of God. I thank you that your word is true. It never returns void. And I ask you to give us the words to say today that reaches through the airwaves and touches hearts in Jesus name. Amen. So today, um, before we even get into what the Lord showed me, I want to just take a moment and thank you. Uh, many, many of you are reaching out to our ministry and um, I, I, we just never take that for granted. Uh, we, we pray for, for you, our partners. We pray for you, those who tune in and, and watch. And I just want you to know that sometimes it's, it's just important to know that, that you are being prayed for. And oftentimes when I talk with teenagers and tell them that their life matters, they look at me and they go, well, well how, how can my life matter? You don't even know me. You don't know what I've done with my life. And the answer is very simple. You matter because God created you. And, you know, in the same, same manner, uh, we pray for you. Whether we know you or not, we, we carry you with us in our heart as we crisscross this nation, uh, bringing hope to a generation of young people who need to know that God loves them, that he has a plan for their lives, and that in him, they really do matter. So I uh, just wanted to obey the Lord at the beginning and let you know that, that we do pray for you. We are so very grateful for you and um, we're thankful that you are with us on this journey um, that we know as you matter. So if you have your Bible, let's run over to 1 Samuel chapter eight. Um, today, <clears throat> we're gonna talk about a subject matter that I oftentimes am led to talk with teenagers about. And we've never talked about this specific in, in detail subject on, on television. So we're going to do that today. I really felt very strongly led as I was uh, in my office preparing that this is what we needed to cover. So if you wanted a title for today, I would entitle it, Sometimes He Gives Us What We Want. And <clears throat> what we want is not always what He wants us to have. But as I share with you young people, uh, God did not create robots, did he? He created free mortal agents, people who have the, the freedom to choose. That's why the word teaches us very clearly, choose you this day. You know, we can choose death, we can choose life, we can choose heaven, we can choose hell, we can choose righteousness, we can choose unrighteousness. It is our choice and God loves us so very much that he, he just trusts that we are going to be children of God, walking in the light as he is in the light and hanging out with him, making the choices that um, honor him and cause us to walk where he wants us to walk. There have been times <clears throat> in my life where he has given me what I have wanted even though what I wanted was not his best for my life, but he turned it because all things work together for the good. What? Two qualifications to those who love God and those who were called according to his purpose. So with that kind of as our um, backdrop, let's jump into the foundational scriptures he gave me for today. First Samuel chapter eight. Uh, let's start with verse four. Then all the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel, verse five, and said to him, look, you are old and your sons do not walk in your ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations, verse six. But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, give us a king to judge us. So Samuel, what did he do? He prayed. Verse seven, and the Lord said to Samuel, heed the voice of the people. In other words, do what the people have asked you to do in all they say to you, for they, watch this, have not rejected you, but they have rejected me that I should not reign over them. So the people have realized that Samuel's old. They, they've realized that Samuel's sons are not walking with God. They're not, they're not walking in, in faith. They're not obeying God. And so they put two and two together and get 77. 
instead of four. Well, you know what? Give us a king. That, that's, that's, that's the logical answer. Samuel's going to die. His, his sons aren't following God. So, you know what? We want to be like everybody else. Get, give us a king because everybody else has a king and it seems to work for them. And you see, that, that, is, that is one of the things that we are commissioned by God to minister to young people. And that is there are two systems at play right now. There's the world system and there's the system that is set up by God, which is the kingdom of God. The world system is buying and selling, right? God's system is seed, time, and harvest. There are two very definitive differences there. I mean, if, if what you want is only what the world has to offer, then you're going to look like the world. This is not rocket science. But if you want what God wants, it's going to look totally different, and it's going to require something of you. It's going to require that, that you and I take an, an, a stand on the uncompromised word of God. And we take his word and we apply it. Well, how do you apply the word? That, that's a question I get a lot from young people. How do you, you, you say apply the word? How, what does that even mean? Glad you asked. When, when, when ministering to teenagers, this is what I encourage parents to say to them. Get the word of God into you because what's in your heart in abundance is what's going to come out of your mouth. And what comes out of your mouth creates the world in which you live. Well, what are you talking about? Genesis 1, if you go read it. In the beginning, God, we could stop right there, but let's keep going. What did he do? He created. How did he create? He spoke. He had humanity in his heart. He had, he had the garden of Eden. He had everything that we see created. He had in his heart in abundance because he spoke it. And when he spoke it, there is no variation of, okay, it might happen. No, he said it and it happened. And so when we speak in abundance of that which is in our heart, we are creating the world in which we live. So I encourage young people to and encourage all of us for that matter. I encourage myself. Dig down deep into the word. Keep your, your face in the word. Keep speaking what the word says. We, we talked about it in, in, in a previous broadcast recently. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word. If you want more faith, you've got to hear more of the word. It, it's not just a thing, well, I'm just, I'm going to, I got to go read about 20 chapters today. No, it's not that you've got to, it's that's how faith comes. And why is faith so important? Because it's impossible to please God without faith. So taking all that into consideration, let, let's go to, um, let's just, I, I want to read what the Bible says. And I want to start with 1 Samuel 8 and let's start with verse 11. Um, and he said, this will be the behavior of the king who will reign over you. Now, this is Samuel talking to the people who have just said, give us what we want. Now, he's going to tell them, well, this, what you want, this is what you're getting ready to get. He will take your sons and appoint them for his own chariots to be his horsemen, and some will run before his chariots. Verse 12, he will appoint captains over his thousands and captains over his fifties will set some to plow his ground and reap his harvest and some to make his weapons of warfare and equipment for his chariots. Are you seeing a continual theme here? Everything that the people are going to do, it's to benefit the king. It's his. That word his is consistently, consistently applied here. Verse 12, um, verse 13, he will take your daughters to be perfumers, cooks, and bakers. 14, and he will take the best of your fields, your vineyards, and your olive groves, and give them to his servants. He's going to take the very best that you have in your life, Samuel's saying, and he's going to take it because he can, because he's the king, and he's going to give it to whomever he wishes. Verse 16, he will take your male servants, your female servants, your finest young men and your donkeys and put them, watch, to his work. He will take a tenth of your sheep and you will be his servants. And you will cry out in that day because of your king whom you have chosen for yourselves and the Lord will not hear you in that day. Now, Samuel is a prophet of the Lord. He's got significant history with God. He, when he says things, things have happened. He, he is, the, the Bible says that in, in those days before they were known as prophets, they were known as seers. And so he saw into the spirit and saw what was going to happen. And people knew that he saw into the future. He saw into the spirit, right? But watch this, 1 Samuel 8, verse 19. This is incredi incredibly important. Nevertheless, after everything Samuel just said, nevertheless, the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel. And they said, no, but we will have 
a king over us. <clears throat> they just wanted their way. Now, why do you think, this is, this is one of the things that, again, we minister to young people. Why do you think they were so determined to have a king? I believe in large measure, they wanted perceived security. They wanted someone they could look at and see. They wanted someone they could touch. They wanted someone that they could see with their natural eyes. How much faith, if any, does it take to do that? I would suggest very minimal. Instead of looking past the natural into the supernatural to a living God who loves us so very much, who has our best interest at heart, who knows the end from the beginning, who knows every answer to every question we will ever ask, who knows what is best for us. Instead of embracing God the Father, these people were explained by a prophet with a significant track record of getting it right. This is what's going to happen to you if you persist in wanting your way. And he goes through six or seven, eight verses telling them, this is going to happen. This is going to happen this, all the way through. And at the very end, after he finished speaking, their response was, give us a king. Give us what we want. Well, I always like to have a testimony where this is concerned with, with, with our broadcast. I think it's just, I think it's just part of relatability. And so I asked the Lord to give me a, a testimony that would be uh, relatable to the topic matter today of give me what I want. And when you ask God questions, guess what? He answers. And as quickly as I asked the question, I mean, literally as quickly as the question left my lips, the answer was coming into my heart. It never ceases to amaze me how God does that. He took me back to when I was 16 years old. I will never forget this. Uh, my mom and dad were buying me a car for my 16th birthday. Now, I had, at that point in my life, because I'd been sexually abused at 15, I didn't tell anybody what had happened to me. Um, I, I, my drug of choice was lying. I lied more than I told the truth. In fact, you had to catch me telling the truth. I lied so much. And so, because I had made a pretty significant lifestyle out of lying, um, I was not given the vehicle that um, I was going to be given on my 16th birthday, but I was given a vehicle. And, and the vehicle I was given, I'll, I'll never forget it, was a brand new candy apple red Nissan Sentra, five speed, two door. And we went, we went to look at the car and I was so excited. You know, 16 years old, I'm getting a car. I mean, it, I'm, I'm just thrilled. Now, I'm not getting the car I was going to get because I lied too much. And I was kind of irked about that, to say to be, to be the least. But I was getting a car. And, you know, it beat walking. So, and it was a brand new car, fresh off the factory. I mean, it was right there. There it was. And the gentleman who was selling my parents the car for me said, if your son will wait one week, We'll have, an air, we'll have the same car, but it will have air condition. Now, my birthday's in January. So in January, I wasn't thinking about air condition. I was thinking about, I want my car. I'm already not getting the car I was going to get because I, now I've lied and this is the penalty I'm gonna pay, but it's sitting right there. I mean, I see the car that they're buying from. All they gotta do is sign their name and it's mine. I can drive it off the lot. And yet I've got a sales guy saying to my parents, Hey, I just want to let you know, it won't cost any extra because it's not here today. We're just going to throw it in for, for you. If you'll wait seven days, same car will be here, same, all, same everything, except you'll have air condition. My mom and dad said, Dean, this is what we need to do. You're going to want air condition because in a couple of months, it's going to start getting warm. And in about five or six months, it's going to be hot. <coughs> well, no, I want this one. Venus, I'm telling you, you need to wait. And then I noticed that my parents kind of backed off. And looking back at it now, I realize they made a decision standing there without me even realizing it. Then, you know what? Let's give Dean what he wants. Sound familiar? So I said, okay. You, they gave me one more opportunity. Are you sure you don't want to wait seven days? It's a week. And you'll have the same car with air. Nope, this is the one I, I, I want. Thank you so much. Thank you for buying it for me. <laughs> they bought it. I drove off, drove off the lot. 
you know, January, February, March, it was fine. April, you know, you, you, we, back then you had the, you could have these little controls and you could have fresh air or recirculated air, which you've got now, but you could also control through a little plastic lever if it was gonna be all hot or all cold. So I threw it to all cold and threw the fresh air in. I thought, whew, a little warm. By May, I had the window down. By June, it felt like the third layer of what I would imagine hell feels like. It was so hot. And I was reliving those moments back in January when my mom and dad said, Dean, if you'll just wait seven days, you'll have air condition. And I began to think at the end of April, May, and certainly by June, why didn't I listen? Why didn't I just wait seven days? I'll tell you why. Because I wanted what I wanted when I wanted it. I cannot tell you how many teenagers we meet on the road who can relate to the, what I just shared with you. Wanting what they want, when they want it, how they want it. The difference is in today's world is this. We have an opportunity to genuinely make a difference in the lives of a lot of people. When I, when I was 16, I wasn't making it, you know, that wasn't, I was 16. Today, our ministry, in partnership with you, have an opportunity to genuinely affect the lives of so many people, not because me speaking, but because it's the God who works through all of us together to show that his way is always better. What's the word say? My thoughts and ways are higher than your thoughts and ways. But God loves us so much that he gives us this opportunity to be free in our choices. And so when you look at what we're talking about today, again, this is the, um, yep, yeah, verse, verse, verse 20. This is, this is the part that I don't want us to miss. First Samuel 8, verse, let's start picking up at 19. Nevertheless, the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel and they said, no, but we will have a king over us. Watch this, verse 20. Why will we have a king over us? That we also may be like all the nations. They wanted to be like everybody else. How many young people, how many young people do we get to see who in their own way say to us, hey, everybody else is doing it. We're just following the crowd. We just wanna be like everyone else. It's time for us to set a standard based on the word of God to go, you know what? You don't have to follow the crowd but you do need to follow the leader. One of the things that we like to do is offer you a snapshot of what God is doing, some of what he's doing on the road through our ministry. And so for, you know, since we began television, we have what we call these road segments. And these are segments where we take you on the road and offer you a quick snapshot of some of what God is doing right before we minister, or maybe it's a set, set time of ministry, or maybe it's right after a ministry, or maybe it's just something God puts on our heart while we're actually on the road. But take a look, please, at this road segment and an announcement on a new book I've written. And then I'm going to come right back and we're going to finish up today's broadcast. Thanks. Hi everyone, welcome to The Road. We are, uh, again, this is just one of my favorite segments that we get to share with you from The Road, where we get to actually bring you into an event where we have just ministered and let you know what God has done. You know, this is a stack of pledge cards from today. And um, we were in this room and it was full a few minutes ago and we were able to just kind of share with young people what it is that, that we do every single day. And I always get a, a report pretty quickly after our events. I want to share with you what, what God did today at this school. Uh, we had 425 students at this Christian high school. 38 suicides were stopped. 326 students responded to having been healed from having been personally rejected. We had 386 teenagers choose, make the choice, to actually forgive someone who had caused them pain. And 219 students signed those pledge cards that I, uh, that I just showed you. This is a pretty standard day in the life of You Matter, where we just go into a school, sit, sit and talk with young people about the value upon their lives. And when it's over, like I said earlier from the studio, you know, they sign those pledge cards and then they, they turn those cards in. And then I just kind of stand off to the corner and wait. And I watch and see what God does. And sure enough today, um, as, as we got through with, with, our, with our chapel service here, we had a young person come up to me, and I want to just share with you what, what this young person said. This was a very, very young, young, I think it was like eighth or ninth grade. And he said to me, um, I wrote it down here. 
When I was nine years old, I had to witness one of my best friends get gunned down in front of me and permanently disable another. I held my friend's dying bodies in my arms. To make it worse, I was stabbed in my public school for my choice of religion at the time. These events controlled my life and led me to an involvement which led me to five psychiatric hospitals after five suicide attempts. Your chapel, watch this word, forced me to realize the change I needed. I converted to Christianity. You have forever influenced my life, thank you. Now, I didn't influence that young person's life. We know it was the Holy Spirit working through me, but he had attempted to end his life five times. And in a school like this, a Christian school, who would think there'd be, I think we said what, we have 38 suicides that were stopped today? And this is what gets most, most parents and most adults when, when they share these numbers with them, is they begin to go, how, how even in a Christian school can the numbers be that high? And the reality is they're that high because teenagers are teenagers wherever they are. Whether they're in a public high school, a Christian high school, an alternative high school, juvenile detention center, wherever they are, they are dealing with real life issues. And today, as we're in this school, it just was very obvious to me when I, when I gave the altar call, the invitation, that this was their moment to have an encounter with a real God who really does love them. People go, well, do you do that in public high schools? No. I mean, in public high schools, you know, we, we can't go that far, but I take it as far as I can. I always ask about, you know, do you need to forgive someone? Is there someone here that you need who's really hurt you, that's causing you pain on the inside? I talk a lot about rejection and overcoming rejection. I talk a lot about, you know, why your life does matter. And, and as you do, as you engage with these students like we do, it, it becomes just amazing to see how the Spirit of God reaches into their hearts it's almost like switching a fli uh, flipping a switch, and you can, you can see them go from hopelessness to hope. Maybe today you are one of those young people, and you're watching the broadcast right now, and you just feel hopeless. Let me tell you, there is hope. Jesus is called the hope of glory for a reason. He is the epitome of hope. Maybe you need someone just to talk to. There's an 800 number on your screen. Dial the number. Someone who is trained as a counselor, who, who loves God and who will love you will answer that telephone. And when they do, watch this. You can talk to them. You can trust them. You can, you can just share your heart with them. And they'll pray with you. We are big, big believers in Matthew 18, 19, where two or three agree as touching anything in Jesus' name is going to happen. So call that number. Get some agreement going in your life. Today, as I close this chapel out, I was able to pray with these students. I was able to literally just believe God with them for those who, whose lives were forever changed. This young man I will never forget because in this young man's life today, the Lord touched him in such a way that it was not by might, it was not by power, it was by the Spirit of the living God. And that's who makes all the difference in our life, and our ministry, but guess what? He's the same one who makes that same difference in your life. So, moving forward, I would encourage you, just stay connected with us, believe God with us, this is what we do every single week on the road. We are somewhere sharing this message of hope. Let's go back to the studio. We'll pick up inside in a few minutes. God bless you. Riveting, raw, and honest transparency is what you encounter within the pages of Accepted. Spanning some 50 years of his life, Dean Sykes invites you into an intimately personal journey that is painfully honest and at the same time full of both truth and grace. Do you feel disqualified in any way to be mightily used by God? Accept it offers an encounter with the truth, leading to the opportunity to drink from living water, a thirst quenching experience with our loving Heavenly Father who welcomes you right here, right now, as you are with open arms. With a foreword written by John Bevere and endorsements written by Kenneth Copeland, Jesse DePlantis, Rick Renner, Pastor George Pearsons, and many others, Accepted promises to be a resource you will want for you and your family. As you read this book, wherever you find yourself on this journey we know is life, our message to you remains constant. In Him, you are accepted. Order your copy of Accepted today. We always hope and pray that you enjoy those road segments and as they offer you, just again, just a snapshot, just an, an opportunity to see some of what God is doing um, through the ministry that we have, that He's given us on the road. Also, uh, very excited about our, our book, Accepted My Journey. It's, um, so many of you are, are taking advantage of this and I'm, I'm so very, very appreciative. I, I get messages from people, I, I see 
postings on Facebook uh, with the actual, uh, the book itself um, screenshotted. And I, I just, I'm grateful for all of you who are interested in it and, and pray about it. This is a resource that I believe will be very beneficial to you, your family, to your individual life. And if you're led to get it, um, the best way and the fastest way to get it is on our website. And the website address is on the screen. And that's, that is a, the, the best way to connect with our ministry. Uh, it's got everything that you would need at your finger, fingertips, literally. If you, if you prefer um, picking up the telephone and calling, that's certainly available as well. There's an 800 number on your screen that is there 24 seven for your use. I never like to close a broadcast without giving you the opportunity to make what we call the choice of a lifetime, asking Jesus to be Lord of your life. If you ask, I guarantee you, he'll respond immediately. If you want to do this, pray this prayer out loud with me. Father, I believe that Jesus is alive. I believe that he walked this earth, he lived on this earth, he went to a cross and he died a gruesome death, went to hell so I wouldn't have to. I believe that you raised him from the dead and today I believe that Jesus is seated at your right hand, Father, and he's talking to you about me. Jesus, I repent for everything I've done wrong. I ask you to forgive me, to cleanse me, to come live in my heart. Be my Lord, be my Savior. I'm yours, you're mine. It's settled in Jesus' name. Hey, if you just prayed that prayer, guess what? You're a brand new creature, brand new. And this isn't the end. My goodness, no, this is a brand new beginning. But you know what? Don't sit there by yourself. The Bible talks about when one person gets born again, heaven rejoices. But let's not let heaven have a party without us. T send me an email. Hey, I, pr I prayed that prayer with you. Call the 800 number. Hey, I prayed that prayer. Get a Bible that you understand. Remember, the more you get into the word, the more the word gets into you and what's in your heart and ab abundance is what comes out of your mouth and that's what creates your world. If you're interested in, in our ministry coming into your area, wherever you live, um, again, the website is the connecting point and I encourage you, um, man, we are, we, are, we are so thankful for the opportunities that God gives us to travel and speak in high schools predominantly and then second to that, Teen Challenge Centers, prisons, and churches. Any of those fit in, in where you live. If you'll reach out, what we do is we take all of these um, notes that we get, emails we get, phone calls we get, and then we just pray and go, Father, where do you want us to go? And our scheduling office takes that and runs with it. So I look forward in God's timing to get to come maybe to your area where together we could, we could really work together for the kingdom of God. Uh, we never charge anyone anything. I never have, never will. The Lord gave me Matthew 10, 8 when we began. Freely you have received, freely give. And he said, Dino, never charge. That's why we're asking God to give us 300 new partners through television who will partner with us financially every single month. The website is the connector. Remember, where there is life, there is hope. Your life really does matter. We'll see you. Today's broadcast was made possible by friends and partners of Dean Sykes and our You Matter campaign. We hope you've been empowered by today's broadcast. You too can make a difference in a teenager's life. Thank you for your continued prayers and support as we hit the road to reach more teens across America and around the world. Remember, where there is life, there is hope. We'll see you next time on our You Matter broadcast with Dean Sykes.